here. Oh my gosh, where to start? Today was really exciting. We had um, our t second challenge today and it was fun. We had to stick um, all 41 constituencies on a blank map of, Tr of Trinidad and Tobago, which was actually exciting because there was a time limit and whatnot. And when I heard one more minute, I just, like a flash power just hit me and I just began sticking everything all over the place, trying to finish in time. I didn't do as well as I would like to. Um, I didn't get to finish in the five minutes provided. Um, I am very, very practically 95% sure that the ones that I did put on the map are in fact correct. There, it was really, really fun. I think I had glue sticked up in my hand a lot too, but it was fun. I actually completed it and it felt good. So we met Mr. Caesar, who is a marshal, and he spoke to us about their duties as a marshal. He also is very informative. He told us about the, the mace, um, the, different, the two different ones, the one for the House and the one for the Senate. Yeah, well, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Brian Caesar, and uh, I'm the Marshal of the Parliament. All right, so I'm sure you're probably wondering, what does the Marshal of the Parliament do? So the Marshal of the Parliament, among other things, carries the mace uh, that, in fact, is brought into the chamber, symbolizing the authority that the presiding officers hold during the course of the sittings. So usually, as the presiding officers enter and leave the chamber, if the sitting is about to begin or end, the mace is brought into the chamber and the marshal leads the presiding officers into the chamber with the mace, yes? So what you're seeing here is a photograph of uh, the house mace. And I say the house mace because there are two different maces, one symbolizing the House of Representatives and uh, another symbolizing the Senate. And he showed us the maces and we also got to hold them and we also got to go into the president's um, dressing area and whatnot. The mace, um, the, different, the two different ones, the one for the House and the one for the Senate, they are both very expensive looking pieces of material, although they aren't actual real gold and silver, but not really at this point. I was very disappointed since it wasn't real gold or silver, but it looked like real gold or silver and it is very significant, all of the shapes and everything on it. Um, we actually got to hold, I actually got to hold the mesas. It was so exciting, it was so fun. I don't think I'll ever get an opportunity like that in my entire life again, so I will never forget it. And right after, we got to meet with the President of the Senate, which was really cool. Senator, the Honorable Timothy Hamill-Smith, he spoke about his duties and what he can do and what is his purpose. So that was very informative because I just thought their job was to just sit down and make money, but I guess it wasn't. One of the things the presiding officer does is when the president is away, he has to act as president. And one of the criteria for the president, he has to be at least 35 years of age. So I just managed to get in. Um, and, <laughs> and therefore, that's a criteria. But there are no specified criteria. What I would assume uh, any government would seek to do, remember that the presiding officer is required to be independent, impartial, objective, knowledgeable about the standing orders. So you will look for someone with a background that certainly you would hope that no party has some real beef with, with the presiding officer, so you, otherwise you will be getting into entanglements all the time. Somebody who is, as I say, objective, analyzes the situation, understands the standing orders, has an even hand in how, he's, uh, how he rules on matters when they come up. And of course, you have to rule from your gut, you know, you, you only have a half a minute in which to respond because people make objections on the floor of the house and they expect, debate has to go on, you can't be holding up debate and say, oh, look, give me an hour 
and I'll come back to you all and make a decision. You have to make your decision right there and then. So you need a familiarity with the standing orders. Um, the President of the Senate also presented us with our challenge for Monday. But I have another challenge for you all. Again, more homework. <laughs> all right. So uh, I'm going to hand out to you challenges here today. Each of you, um, Michael, you have a challenge here about the role of the presiding officer. I hope you're happy a little bit. And Sumita, we have your challenge. All right. So likewise, it's a process of lawmaking. You know, the truth is if you do anything they say is wrong, blame it on me. Okay. <laughs> all right. Sasia. All right. So we have your challenge. You got the role of the presiding officer too. But I hope you do very well. And that you too, Debbie Ann, your, your, yours is, I take it, the role of lawmaking. You have a weekend. We're going to award marks to you. Of course, you're on TV. So you better be able to go back to your friends and your family and say, wow, I did it, you know. I passed with flying colors. So we have two days to prepare for our presentations on Monday. Hopefully all goes well. Our third, my third challenge is on the process of lawmaking. And I'm very excited that I got that because I didn't really want to do the one on the President of the Senate. Sorry, President of the Senate. I have gotten a challenge on for Monday and I'm very much excited because I'm getting to play a little teacher role. That's a secret. Um, I'm looking forward to taking on my new challenge. Look to see to bring my creativity to it. Um, probably entwine some of my passions into that presentation so it might surprise you. Apart from fun, it was also informative and educational in the sense that I have learned a lot. Today was good so far. It's Friday. I'm ready to go home and get some sleep. Bye!